Good afternoon, CMPC family. Let me tell you about this Sunday at CMPC. You once again will have the option to join us for corporate worship in the Covenant Life Center or gym, as some of you call it, at either 8.30 or 11. Again, let me remind you that some of you should not come. Those who are at risk uh, and have underlying health conditions, of course, should not come. Also, those who, who believe it's still best for your family to worship at home should feel free to do that. Remember that we will begin to stream the service at 8.30 a.m. on Sunday. Uh, you can watch it anytime after that. Sunday School will be Facebook Live at 10 o'clock. And again, that can be watched later in the day as well. Uh, this Sunday, we will be looking at uh, our series From Fear to Faith. We're going to go to Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 8 to 13. And really, you could call the sermon one of two things. Uh, we could call it a mother's prayer list. I'm going to look at 10 things that a mother can pray for her children, or any of us can pray for ourselves or for anybody else. The other title could possibly be The Transforming Power of God's Grace. Ten ways God's grace is at work transforming us. I know some of you are thinking, a ten-point sermon? Well, you're just going to have to trust me on that. What we're going to do is we're going to look at how the grace that saves us alone never leaves us alone once it saved us. Or it doesn't leave our children alone. So come and join us for that. Uh, the hymns all deal with these themes of the transforming power of God's grace. We're going to gather with the Fanny Crosby classic hymn, Blessed Assurance, reminding us of all that we have in Christ. I am a praise by a modern day classic, uh, In Christ Alone by the Getty Town and Team. For a hymn of uh, testimony, we'll sing Amazing Grace, John Newton's 18th century hymn that reminds us of that power of God's grace. And our final hymn, to him to respond to God's word, will be a nearly 200-year-old hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. We're not positive who wrote this hymn, probably Dorothy Thrupp, a woman living in England. But it's a hymn that's really taken the imagination of, uh, of Christians over the last two centuries. You'll find this hymn in over a thousand hymnals. Uh, and, and possibly, uh, probably because it has such a... Uh, a broad picture of the theology of the Christian life. You've got saving love and the grace of God. You've got the salvation message of God. You've got God's fellowship with his people. And then you have continuing service to God. You get a really a broad perspective of the Christian life in this hymn. You can check out the words as, as we prepare for that. It was great to worship with about 100 of you last week. And we look forward to the day when we can all gather together again. Until that day, keep praying for God to revive his church. Keep praying for a global awakening to the glory of who he is. May God bless each of you. Uh, may he continue to protect us as a congregation. We're giving thanks for what he's done there. And we look forward to that day to soon come.